this is a story of a car that was built different. A car that wasn't a mass-produced, focused, high-profit margin, sell-to-everyone kind of car. It was a car that was birthed out of the noggin that had spent two decades prior developing manual transmissions and loving everything motorsport related. The car that would get the hands of some of the most iconic car technology that was only available in one other car that's now like a billion dollars. I'm Alex, Alex Martini with two underscores on Instagram. And today, ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about how to modify the first generation Lexus IS300. car parts, Modular Car Martini Works. If you don't see it on the site, shoot us a message on the site and I promise we have it. We're still just adding a bunch of stuff to it, being like the world. We can even give out little discounts for it and we need your help so we can keep making content and even a, like a tea purchase, you know, I mean the world, like car show shirt or cruising shirt that's not even in frame. Let's take it back to 1970 where a man by the name of Nobuaki Katayama was brought on board to develop manual transmissions for Toyota and Lexus. But then that's not where he would end, you know? At time, he quickly progressed. He would go on to help on projects like Toyota's every evolving motorsport division, helping in projects like Le Mans, World Rally Championship, and the Sports Car World Championship Racing, an education he would use to help drive the development of the fourth generation Toyota Supra, but more importantly, the AE86. The Lexus IS300, the official car of that best friend you can call at 3 a.m. and they'll still pick you up. Katayama understood the success of the Supra. I mean, it was a blank check sports car built to bring back the heydays of the 90s tuner era to a close, and by all definitions, was overbuilt as f like the cat we just rescued, Tortilla. There's not an ounce of fat on that cat, just straight muscle. Katayama's goal within the first generation IS though was a bit more difficult. More volume, more compact, but still make enough splash to get BMW and Mercedes wet in the shallow end of the pool. But like all video games, this car had some Easter eggs all over it. The drilled pedals were inspired by his teenage son's car who had it as a weird mod. The chronometer display was reminiscent of watches to give the car a perceived luxury feeling that it was still trying to get. The direct competitor to the BMW 3 Series won Japan's car of the year, and aftermarket companies were copying the rear taillight chrome thing and put it on goddamn everything everything all of it lexus you made cars look so good and so shitty at the same time 2006 will never be the same but that was the thing this thing slapped it was the evolution that the american automotive enthusiasts needed when their aging nissans were coming out on massive mileage issues and mitsubishi was just trying to stay above water and nobody thought that some of these cars were cool until 2013 came around and then everyone thought it was cool because it is this work cross is a wild thing to see sideways by the way my buddy Tyler drifts one at US Air. It looks like a potato sliding across a kitchen counter, and I love it. At the end of the day, we got a three liter straight six that could come in a five speed manual at about 217 horsepower. But the acronym was enough to spruce up anybody's ears the 2JZGE. But on! Sport wagon, sport cross. They get confusing. I'm sorry, Tyler. So how do you modify this little brother to the Toyota Supra? The Lexus IS300, the official car for Cartoon Network kids. Let's get the obvious out of the way. You don't want to hear it. I don't want to say it, but the 2JZGE and 2JZGTE are not the same. As much as it's like only one letter, just putting a 2JZ in there from a Mark IV Supra will not yield the same results. And I know you'll want to, but let's keep the build simple here. The Lexus IS300 needs maybe four to five key mods to really dial in its driving experience because it is good. Remember the guy who helped make the car come off the same ethos of the E86? It was light, it was nimble, it was just a little bit too slow. He made this one too! It just has a little bit more luxury. So number one, coilovers are gonna do loads for this car. Fortunato, if you're gonna track this thing, BC Racing, if you aren't. BR Series coilovers are 1200 bucks and 500s are like 1700 bucks. I promise you, you will need to spend the money here. Can you get a sway bar? Yes, do you need it? No. What do you need? You need to make sure your bushings are good because they're probably not. 18 by eight and a half plus 35 wheels will fit on nearly every sport wagon, sedan, or sport cross with 215, 40, or 225, 35 tires. Now here's with the styling. I would go with something like a five spoke or a simple six spoke. Enki has this entire lineup covered and so does Koenig. I don't think there's a single Enki or single Koenig that you could put on this car and it not look good. I like the hypergrams. I like the ultragrams. I like all of it. I even like the RPF one. Now, yes, you can go into gram lights and you can get 57 DRs or CRs and all that sort of stuff, but those do get really pricey. And the point of the Lexus IS300 is to be an affordable way to get into the whole thing. And I still think they are actually a little bit affordable. So this is a good one to just keep it 
budget friendly. Now, personally, I do think the big dinner plate wheels like SSRs and OEM wheels just aren't it on this car because the fender above the wheel well is too like skinny to accommodate such a chunker. That's just my thoughts. A Gretti Supreme exhaust is 10 out of 10 in our opinion, and I love the sound. It gives you 10 horsepower, it weighs like 33 pounds, and is a three inch output, which gives you just enough rumble without too much of that like drone. If you want more power and you're looking for swapping, you're going to want to be careful here, okay? You don't have to do this. This car is too difficult to just do a 2J swap in. It doesn't align like you've seen. I think more people would put a small turbo on their stock setup, pair it up with an ECU, and have fun with it at like 300 horsepower. But I almost think that's what takes away from making the Lexus IS300 perfect. This car suffers from Okaj. I'm still working on the acronym. Overbuilt cars on jacks. The IS300 is the top three cars that suffer from Okaj, okay? And it almost exclusively has to do with people thinking the car must have more power and immediately looks to swap a 2JZ or a 1J into it. But pump your brakes. What we need to do here is enjoy the car for what it is and what it isn't. It is a four-door luxury fun car that came in a manual transmission and is the dad equivalent of the AE86 with a tie getting done with work at 5 p.m. Can you get a 1J, throw a little Link ECU, a Gretti exhaust and grab your favorite glasses to be just like Ken Gucci, you can, and it'll be badass, but it's going to be expensive, and you're probably better off doing that with a car that has much more space to do it, like an SC400. The IS300 is a stout, like, kind of scrunchy car that has built to only have the engine that's in it for it, and that's okay. So how do you modify a Lexus IS300? You grab $12,000 to get a clean example and immediately get upset that the fender is rusting. You didn't think it was, but it is. It just kind of pops in there. Then you grab your favorite leather restore and you go to town on the inside because you won't be able to afford anything else for quite a while. You find a new hobby and watch collection because your dash looks like one, and you try to go find out how much it costs to buy an Alteza badge after you figure out that a 2JZ swap is just too expensive. After that, you tighten up the suspension with BC Racing from Martini Works, and then you hop into some new tires and wheels. Go with Enkis, go with Koenigs, they won't let you down. Go lightweight and it'll make the car feel like it's on rails without feeling rough. At this point, you've near peaked JDM entry era. You've got the like the Nobori flag somewhere in your garage. The neck beard is growing a bit and from there, you're highly committed. Now, I would highly recommend taking your car to an autocross or drift event at this point and if you got the five-speed manual, you're onto something. If you don't, save some time and money and do the swap. It is a bit tedious but this is one of those transmission swaps that actually lends super well to first timers and learners because it's a Toyota. The Lexus IS300, the official car for people who don't take anything too seriously. Now, once you've got that done, do the small things like your brake lines, your rotors, headlight conversions, and keep those rear taillights clear because it's like the only thing that looks cool anymore. Go find out how to fix your weird pedal behavior that these cars have and then snag an intake and be done with it because you've probably spent less than $17,000 for one of the most iconic looking Lexuses out there. And if you do have a manual, you 100% have have a car that will be a collector's car in 10 years, unless you bought it from a drifter who threw it into a wall or something because too many of these cars got bought like 10 years ago and they are absolute shit for brains in terms of how they look these days. But most importantly, when you do go to modify your IS300 or you're just looking for inspiration and build threads, you can do it at Martini Works where we've got both and we can help you find the right stuff, including wheels, tires, and suspension. I'm Alex, Alex on Martini with two underscores and we'll see you on the next one. Peace.